Learning Outcome 3.8 Graphically portray the magnitude and phase of the Fourier series coefficients versus k and versus omega. In previous learning outcomes, we introduced the synthesis equation for Fourier series, where x of t is the sum of a bunch of complex exponentials scaled each by an a sub k. Those a sub k's are your Fourier series coefficients. The k we're talking about is the index of the Fourier series coefficients, and omega is k times the fundamental frequency omega naught. You learned how to calculate a sub k in learning outcome 3-4, and how to calculate the fundamental frequency omega naught you learned in learning outcome 3.3. Those are in the same video. Go back and review them if you need some help here. A sub k quite often is a complex number, so first I want to do a little bit of review of complex numbers. We can write a complex number, a plus bj, in a form we call a rectangular form or Cartesian form. For instance, 2 plus 2j is a complex number written in rectangular or Cartesian form. That same number we can write as 2 square root of 2 angle 45 degrees, and we call that polar form. And if we write it as 2 square root of 2 e to the pi over 4, we call that polar or exponential form. How do we come up with those numbers? Let's think about the complex plane with the real axes and the imaginary axes. Locate that point on the plane. It has a real value of 2 and an imaginary value of 2j. That's the rectangular Cartesian form of it. If we consider that same point and its relationship to the origin, then we're talking about it in the polar form. The distance of that point from the origin is 2 square root of 2, Pythagorean theorem. The phase or the angle that the line connecting that point and the origin makes with the positive real axes is the phase. And for this particular example, it's 45 degrees. We quite often use radians instead of degrees, therefore pi over 4. Here's an example from the learning outcome 3334 video. x of t is cosine of 2t plus 3 sine of 4t minus 5. We calculated in that example that a sub k's were as listed here with a fundamental frequency of 2 and all other a sub k were 0. To work on learning outcome 3.8, we want to take these a sub k and graphically portray their magnitude and phase. Notice that these are complex numbers. Even if they don't have a complex part to them, they're still considered complex. And even if they're purely imaginary, they're considered complex. We want to graph them versus k. k are the indices for a sub k. We have a k value of 1, of negative 1, 2, negative 2, and 0 for this particular example. We can plot all those a sub k in the complex plane. For a k of 1, we have a sub 1, which is a value of 1 half that's on the real axis, and it's 1 half unit away from the origin. Therefore, its magnitude is 1 half. Same thing for a negative 1, because it has the same exact value. a2 has a value of negative 3 halves j. We take that j, move it to the numerator, and then it has a negative sign to go with it. So that's this point here. The distance from that point to the origin is 3 halves. That's its magnitude. Notice the magnitudes are always positive. When k is negative 2, we again bring the j up. That makes that 3 positive. We're at the point up here. And that again is a distance of 3 halves away from the origin, or a magnitude of 3 halves. When k is 0, we're way over here at negative 5. Even though we have a value of negative 5, the magnitude is the distance from the point to the origin, and that distance and magnitude are positive. So we get positive 5 for the magnitude. And since all other a sub k are 0, their magnitudes are all 0. Let's consider the case where we're now looking for the phase. We're still plotting versus k. We're still looking at these same points, but now what is the angle each of these points, each of these complex numbers, makes with the real axes? a1 and a-1 are positive real values, so they have a phase of 0, because they rely right on the positive real axes. 
A2 is down here on the negative imaginary axis, so it has a phase of minus pi over 2. A negative 2 is up here on the positive imaginary axis with a phase of positive pi over 2. A0 being way over here has a phase of pi. We could call it negative pi, but out of convention we usually call it positive pi. All other a sub k have a phase of 0. Now let's go back to that magnitude. Part of this learning objective is to plot it versus omega. That means we want to plot with our axes being omega instead of k. We can accomplish that by remembering that omega is k times omega naught, and we know that omega naught is 2. So if we take each of our k values and multiply them by 2, we've now changed our axes from a k axis to an omega axis. All of the magnitudes stay the same, so the rest of our plot stays the same, and that's the answer we're looking for if we're plotting the magnitude of a sub k versus omega. Similarly, when we're talking about the phase of a sub k versus omega, it's those same phase values, but instead of k, we switch it to an omega, and then our axis changes because we're going to scale each of our k values by an omega naught, which is currently 2.